Good day, everyone. Thank you again for joining. We will be starting the webinar now for today's webinar. Tazdit is here with us as the speaker. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the webinar. If you have any question during the webinar, feel free to ask in the Zoom chat. We will be answering them in the QA part of the webinar. Tazdit, please take the limelight. Thank you, Anpur. Um, please let me know. Uh, if I am not clearly audible or my skin is not clearly visible. So hello everyone. Welcome to another <coughs> apps code webinar. I'm Dustin and today I'm going to show you our latest features for QDU proxy scale, which has been added recently. So you can see the table of content here. Um, these are some basic features that we have recently added uh, to our QDU proxy scale. And we're go going to demonstrate this. But before I jump into the actual demo, let me tell you what proxy skill is. Suppose you have a MySQL group replication and you are aware of the performance. Thousands of queries are being requested concurrently. Some of them are write, some of them are read. Same queries may repeat and a lot of chaos going on here. It would have been better for you if there was a system where you can set a query rule like which type of query should go to which server or return repeated query results from cache. And actually, ProxySQL does all these things I've just mentioned. ProxySQL actually sits between the user and the MySQL server and forwards query traffic to the MySQL according to the query rule you have just set in the ProxySQL server. Basically, ProxySQL is an open source and high performance, high availability database protocol aware proxy for MySQL and its forks. It has some advanced connection management system. It creates some connection pooling with the MySQL servers. And when some traffic is sent to this ProxySQL server, it uh, reads tra uh, traffic, reads the query, uh, uh, tries to set this with the query rules and forwards that traffic to the specific pods or specific nodes of MySQL server. And also, if you uh, are uh, if you are afraid of heavy traffic, ProxySQL uh, provides you with ProxySQL clustering, where the ProxySQL uh, nodes uh, distributes the loads among themselves and it enhances the performance uh, significantly. So <laughs> now there's a question that why to use kubedb proxy skill? <laughs> uh, you know, when you are going to set up your own proxy skill manually in Kubernetes or anywhere, you have to go through some of the steps. Like, first of all, you have to create a monitor user inside the MySQL server because proxy skill actually uses uh, or accesses uh, to the MySQL server to this monitor user and monitors the actual state of the MySQL server. And, and then it uh, processes the query, uh, whether to send to that particular MySQL server or not. So every MySQL server in this group replication needs a monitor user, uh, which is uh, accessed to with, uh, by, by the proxy skill. So you have to create that inside the MySQL server. Also, to uh, for for that monitor user to work properly, you have to inject another addition additional SQL file in that in that MySQL server. Again, uh, to let the proxy SQL server know about the MySQL servers, you have to add the MySQL nodes to the server pool inside the proxy SQL. And if you are uh, willing to set up a proxy SQL cluster then you also have to set the proxy SQL server stable by yourself. But with kubedb, uh, we try to minimize these steps or we just try to make this initialization step a bit easier for you. So if you actually want to connect with the proper kubedb MySQL backend with uh, a proxy SQL server, all you just need to do is just mention the MySQL reference in your proxy SQL YAML and kubedb would automatically connect your proxy SQL server uh, to your MySQL backend. And also, uh, in case of you, uh, you are trying to create a proxy SQL cluster, uh, 
all you need to do is just mention the replica count in the uh, proxy SQL YAML and kubedb would do the rest for you. So we'll see how to do uh, all these things eventually in this demonstration. And here are the resources from this apps code license server. You can get the kubedb license uh, and to know more about proxy SQL, you can go to the docs and you can check out other links and to install the kubedb in your cluster uh, you may follow these uh, commands or you may apply these commands and now uh, we can go to the demonstration so before demonstration uh, let me show my workstation to you uh, you can see here that i have three mysql server node here running in my cluster uh, this is okay these three nodes are actually in a MySQL group replication and uh, which is kubedb MySQL group replication. And this kubedb MySQL group replication has been deployed using this YAML. So uh, you can see that uh, the version is 5.7.36 and the replica count is three. The topology is group replication. There are some uh, related issues to PVC, PVC related things they are configured. And also this MySQL is TLS secured if you want to know uh, how to deploy a TLS secure MySQL, you may refer to the kubedb documentation. So I have already applied this YAML in my cluster and uh, you can see that my MySQLs are running and we will check our proxy SQL functionalities on this particular MySQL server today. Uh, so the proxy SQL we are going to uh, deploy uh, we would use this YAML to deploy that. First of all, you can see the metadata section here. Uh, I have mentioned the name and the namespace. So as for the spec section, first of all, we have mentioned the version of proxy SQL. So currently kubedb is supporting 2.3.2 of proxy SQL. Uh, we would add other versions on uh, customer requirements or if we found anything else uh, later, stable versions and in this uh, replica section we have mentioned a number three that means that we're going to deploy a proxy SQL cluster here with three nodes the mode is set to group replication that means uh, this proxy SQL is going to be ready for supporting a uh, group replication mysql and there are some storage things and then comes the uh, real backend part in this backend I have to mention the MySQL server reference to which I am uh, going to connect my proxy SQL. And also I have to mention the replicas, uh, which is how many nodes are running actually of that MySQL group replication. So this is all uh, you need to mention to connect with a particular backend. And here you can see that the TLS uh, configuration in proxy SQL, uh, we set up TLS uh, when we are trying to uh, secure the front end connections of proxy SQL. If you are uh, uh, known to proxy SQL, you know that proxy SQL have two types of connections. One is backend and another one is uh, front end. So backend connection is uh, referred to the connection between the proxy SQL server and the MySQL server. And the front end is from proxy SQL server to the user end. It is called the front end. So we would, we would set up the TLS only when we are uh, trying to um, secure the front end connections. And to set up the TLS, you have to uh, get an issuer. I have used these steps. Uh, first of all, uh, I have installed SART Manager in my cluster. I've created a CA key, CA SART, created a secret and mentioned this secret inside the issuer and then mention this issuer to this proxy scale uh, issuer reference. So in this way, <clears throat> we can uh, set up a TLS secured proxy scale. So uh, let's apply this CML now. You can see that a new proxy scale is uh, on provisioning state. 
you can see that new nodes are uh, uh, coming up. In the meanwhile, let's exit into the MySQL port. So uh, let's look into what we have in our MySQL. So you can see that this is a fresh instance. And one thing I want to show you, let's show user from mysql.user. Sorry, select user from Here you can see that uh, username proxy SQL is there inside the MySQL server. And this is actually the monitor user we were talking about uh, when introducing you to the, why should we use QDU proxy SQL? So this user is actually created when the proxy SQL YAML has been applied. Before that, this user were not there. So, uh, you can understand that the proxy will uh, clearly use this user for the monitoring purpose. Now let's exit into one proxy skill server. So let's jump into the proxy skill admin panel. You can you know that the port is six zero three two for admin in Proxy SQL Server. So uh, now let's first grab the MySQL servers here. So show uh, sorry select all from MySQL. Let's go to the runtime MySQL runtime MySQL servers. So you can see here that my proxy skill is automatically configured with all the MySQL servers, uh, which were running in my cluster. In this host group ID section, uh, I wanna mention one thing that uh, when the host group is two, that means it is the writer host group and the uh, host, uh, three is used for the reader host groups. So as we have said earlier that QDB just set up your basic uh, initialization for the proxy skill. So you have just used uh, some simple configuration here. You can change everything uh, whenever you want. So, and also we can see the status of all the servers are online. Uh, so that means uh, proxy skill is successfully connected with the uh, backend MySQL. Now <clears throat> we want to uh, see what resources have proxy skill created inside our uh, cluster. So first of all, let's get some uh, uh, you can see that uh, here, the proxy skill server has created uh, auth, auth secret, a client search secret, cluster secret, uh, matrix exporter, and also server search and the token. So in this auth secret, you can get the monitor user's secret, uh, password and username. them. So CPU secret. You can see that it, there is a uh, username proxy skill and the password here. And this is the exact uh, exact monitor username and password, which is used by proxy skill to connect with the MySQL server. And also uh, if we fetch the services, you can see that two services are created. And one of them exports the port 6033. So 
uh, you can assume that you just uh, need to connect with this service if you uh, actually want to uh, use the proxy SQL in your Kubernetes cluster. So kubedb actually eases all these steps for you. Now, <coughs> let's uh, test one thing. Let's use, uh, let's create a user inside the MySQL and let's try to connect uh, to that uh, MySQL to, through, to the MySQL through the proxy SQL server from another pod. Here you can see I have an extra pod here running. I have installed uh, some basic Ubuntu image in that pod and the MySQL client so that I can make some MySQL queries here. So first of all, let me create a user inside the MySQL server. Let the user be test. Uh, let the password also be test and let it be require SSL front all Okay, so we have created a test user in this uh, MySQL server. Let's uh, now check, first check um, if there is any change in the proxy SQL server. Uh, and that shouldn't be the case. So select username from runtime MySQL. So here you can see that in the proxy SQL, uh, there's no entry for this test uh, test user, but still let us try to connect uh, if we can do so. Give CTL exec dash it dash demo. So we actually, uh, we are going to connect to that extra pod I just showed you. So dash you test HP test sh proxy SQL server SVC dash P you know that the uh, user interface user port is 6033 and you can see that the access is denied we need to uh, enter the uh, data of new user in the proxy scale when we have created a new user in the MySQL server because proxy scale doesn't know this user so proxy scale won't let anyone to uh, hit the MySQL with the user that it doesn't know so let's apply this command in the uh, proxy scale server you can see we have set the username to test password to test uh, the user is active and the user is use SSL one because uh, the we want this user to be DLS secured and the default host group is two which means it uh, the default host group is the writer host group and the max connections is 200 so this uh, enter and also we know that we have to save it to the disk and save uh, load it to the runtime so save my SQL users to disk load MySQL users to runtime. So now uh, this should be effective. Let's try to connect again. So you can see that this time uh, we are we are able to connect to the proxy skill using that test user. So now let's do some queries, show databases. And we can see uh, what databases are in there. And yeah, we also want to see the proxy scale uh, cluster metrics now. In this uh, in in this table, you can see with this query, uh, I have got that uh, only two queries have been passed through only the MySQL server uh, proxy scale server number two. Uh, these queries were uh, uh, were sent from this pod 
and no other things were uh, no other things took place on other ports but now what we want to do is just we would run some sql script uh, send some uh, heavy load to those proxy sql servers uh, through that service and check whether proxy sql is uh, is fairly distributing the loads or not but uh, before that we want to create a table here and the database so in this mysql server create database random use random create table random db column a worker column b integer and let's set the primary key primary key is column a oh okay we just missed a parenthesis okay so show databases show tables so you can see the random tb is there now this was the last uh, state and in our uh, extra pod i have already uh, I have already written a script. Oh, I need to log out from that MySQL console. So nano load dot sh. In this uh, <clears throat> in this script, you can see that I am sending the uh, load to the proxy SQL service. Here you can see the host name, and uh, at the service, I am using the user port. The password you can see these variables are already declared above and we would uh, run these queries for 100 times so pretty much uh, a good amount of queries we're uh, passing through the proxy scale and uh, we should actually see the how proxy scale is distributing the loads so actually this is the uh, this is the best script we are going to run now So let's run. Let's wait for the queries to process. Okay, so now let's check uh, what proxy skill have done. Let's wait for a minute to sync it up. Okay, so you can see that one pod uh, is updated. Uh, proxy skill. Uh, in proxy school cluster sometimes nodes take some time to actually sync up between them so yeah now you can see uh, finally all the ports are synced up and now you can see that the query is fairly distributed amongst all the proxy school servers and if you see the client connections it is also fairly distributed in this uh, mysql table let's see whether something happened or not uh, let's select all from random tb so yeah you can see that uh, a lot of entries have been uh, entered here so again let's check uh, how the how each proxy sql server has distributed loads to the proc mysql servers like uh, this table actually means that from the proxy scale server zero, as we are exiting to the proxy scale server zero, uh, to the pro MySQL servers, how the loads were distributed. These figures, uh, you can see that the uh, load distribution in the MySQL end is also fair, also fair enough uh, to be said that uh, proxy scale has uh, worked excellently. So we can see that proxy skill is uh, doing its job quite well. Now, another thing is failover recovery in case of proxy skill clusters. So let me describe what is failover recovery, failover is. So let's suppose that you have 
three uh, node proxy SQL cluster, and suddenly one node disappeared or it lost connection with the other nodes. So what KubeDB operator would do, it would create another proxy SQL pod and reconnect it with uh, other clusters. And it would take some time to resync among them. And after it resyncs, it will actually uh, work uh, as it was working before. So let's now uh, delete one pod and see uh, if KubeDB proxy skill is able to uh, recover the failover. So let's delete it. Delete pod. Let's delete the MySQL uh, proxy skill server number two. You can see that the proxy skill uh, server is in critical state. Uh, meanwhile, uh, when the proxy skill server is uh, recovering its failure, let us clear the MySQL table so that we can run the same script again and check if the newly joined uh, pod is actually participating in the load balance process. So delete from random dot random db where column b equals to 50 i have earlier said uh, everything uh, every value to the to 50 so that it it becomes easy for me to actually delete all so now let's select all from random tv okay so the uh, everything is empty now you can see and yes let's uh, see the current status okay so you can see that this pod is actually fresh and new because uh, no queries have been passed through it uh, if we see that previous load balancing uh, scenario, then we can see that the server two processed actually 182 queries and 91 client connection was created. But uh, here you can see that the value is zero. That means this is the uh, newly fresh pod, newly created fresh pod. And now we would test, is this uh, newly created pod is actually participating in the load balance? So, <laughs> Let's now uh, send the load uh, we sent earlier again. So, okay. Okay, so we can see that the load is sent. So you can see that the newly joined node has already processed 216 new queries. Uh, that means that uh, it is participating in the load balance or load distribution process. So you can say that the proxy SQL has, has successfully recovered the pod failure. That was it for the proxy SQL clustering section. The last thing I want to show you is that custom configuration of proxy SQL. So what is custom configuration? Actually, if you are well aware of proxy skill, you know that there are a lot of variables inside the proxy skill. Like uh, if we see here, show admin variables, you can see a big list of it. And we have MySQL variables and a lot of global variables here, uh, which helps us to actually uh, configure our query rules very precisely and enhance our performance as we want to. So it is a very uh, common thing that you might want to configure or bootstrap your proxy skill with your very own configurations regarding these admin variables or MySQL variables. So we have tried to come up with some solution so that uh, you might not have to uh, exit into that pod, uh, put a new CNF and then reload the proxy skill again. So 
what we have done here that you can pass this uh, pass your very own configuration through a secret under this custom uh, hyphen proxy scheduler cnf uh, data section and all you need is to mention this uh, config secret to the proxy SQL yaml and proxy SQL would bootstrap using uh, this particular configuration but uh, as we have um, some limitations, we are uh, highly requesting you not to change these five fields, uh, which is monitor username, monitor password, SSL uh, P2S chart, SSL P2S key, SSL P2S CA, because uh, those are really important to connect with our MySQL backend. And uh, this is the way we have designed our QD proxy scale. Uh, we might change our procedure based on your feedback but uh, until then, please don't uh, change these sections and other sections you may, you may uh, edit as you, as you wish. So now let's uh, demonstrate one uh, custom configuration. Uh, before that, uh, I wanna show you one thing that like uh, what I want to change in my uh, newly new custom configuration uh, provided proxy skill uh, i want to change this field which is a refresh interval normally we set this to a value of 2000 but i want to change this uh, to 1515 when uh, when the proxy skill would bootstrap it should bootstrap with this particular value it's just an example i know this is uh, not so much significant in terms of proxy skill performance so you can see that uh, if we see that the admin refresh interval, if you don't provide a custom configuration, our proxy skill would bootstrap with a value 2000. So now if we, pro if we are going to provide a custom configuration, the proxy skill should bootstrap with the value 1515. So let's test this thing. Before that, we are going to delete our Proxy scale. Uh, delete. Proxy scale .ml. And also, we want to edit the proxy scale YAML as well. So, here I have uh, already added the config secret thing um, before the webinar. Uh, so that I may not uh, rewrite these things. So in this following manner, in this following section, if you mention uh, the uh, secret name inside which you are providing the custom configuration, so the proxy skill will do the rest for you. And please note down that the section name is config secret. And under that, you just have to mention the name. So let's save it. Uh, before that, uh, I want to show you that I have already created the secret here. My okay, so what was the name actually? My custom config still get sick. Oh, sorry, I'll miss the get. So, yeah, you can see that my custom config secret is already there inside the cluster so now uh, i have mentioned this secret to my proxy SQL ml and now i'm going to uh, apply the proxy SQL ml so let's apply it so the proxy SQL is now provisioning Uh, once it uh, gets ready, uh, we would enter into the pod. So let's wait for it to become ready.
so yeah you can see uh, it was set to 1515 okay now the proxy skill is ready so yeah uh, let's log into the admin panel uh, select So yeah, you can see that the admin refresh interval is set to 1515, uh, which means that this custom configuration was actually processed by the QDU proxy school operator. And it was actually, uh, the proxy school was bootstrapped uh, using uh, the values provided in this section. Actually, uh, we have lots of limitations uh, regarding this custom configuration because we are not a database expert. So, we actually uh, are unaware of lots of use cases here. Uh, that's why uh, we have to go through a lot of research and then uh, your feedback is really very important for us uh, to actually come up with a solution. Uh, what should we do or what should we should not? So please help us uh, come out of this situation. And we are working on this custom configuration. Hope uh, we will able to provide something which satisfies our customer. So uh, that was it with the demonstration. Uh, in the future work, uh, we are planning for add support for MariaDB and, Par and Parcon Extra DB to our KubeDB proxy scale. And also we, we are going to support uh, or we are going to add support for horizontal scaling of proxy scale cluster and also the reconfigure TLS using ops requests and, and a lot of things would be added later. So thank you um, for your uh, kind attention. And if you have any question, please feel free to ask in the Zoom chat or please unmute yourself and you can ask the question. Uh, uh, yeah, so thanks, Tazi. Thanks for the uh, demo. I have a few questions. Um, uh, so one of the questions is, can you show us the services or the endpoints that are created for the proxy SQL uh, stateful set? Uh, yes, thank you. So, uh, service. So mainly we have two uh, services created for the for the proxy scale. So one is the governing service, uh, where we actually uh, expose two ports. Uh, one is 6032 for the admin uh, proxy scale admin panel, and one is the 6033 for the. created on the proxy skill name, and it would expose the 6033 port uh, on which the user can uh, connect to the proxy skill server. So, yeah. So, uh, so one, one question I'm confused. So this uh, endpoints, if you run a command like kubectl get endpoints, and then proxy mysql server, like what IPs are those showing? Uh, can you repeat the command please? kubectl get, get endpoints. Endpoints dash and demo, and then the my proxy MySQL server. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is going to one of the three parts, right? So I, I yes. guess my question is uh, when we are running that you you are running that Ubuntu command, uh, and and that command was connecting to this service IP address, correct? Yes. Okay, so. When you're talking about like the proxy SQL was distributing those uh, queries, yeah. I mean those queries are getting distributed by Kubernetes itself, right? Because because when you are connecting to this service, it will just randomly distribute uh, the queries to one of these endpoint proxy SQL pods, correct? Uh, yeah, actually Kubernetes uh, does helps in the load distribution, but actually proxy SQL have uh, really advanced connection management. So uh, and load balancing itself. So uh, actually, um, uh, sometimes proxy scale clusters also uh, forwards uh, queries to another uh, proxy scale node. 
like I have uh, entered uh, to a specific node, a specific pod with this service, but that service, uh, that uh, pod might uh, forward the traffic to another pod so that uh, the load distribution is actually uh, maintained with the proxy scale cluster itself, proxy scale itself. Uh, yes, we keep DB, uh, Kubernetes service helps, but uh, that's not all. Okay, okay. Is it possible for us to see that? Like uh, run the load script, but maybe just connect to one of the ports of the proxy, proxy SQL and we should be able to see the load get distributed. Uh, currently, I'm not uh, actually prepared for that. Uh, I hope I'll, uh, I'll be able to show you this later. Okay. Uh, another question was, uh, it sounds like a MySQL, sorry, the proxy SQL itself has like a web admin console, right? Web console? Yes. Uh, is that enabled or like, are you able to use that here or no? Uh, uh, no, uh, we are just uh, using the using the admin panel from the console, uh, uh, not from the uh, web. So uh, that's not actually enabled here. Is it possible as a user to enable that using custom config or something? Um, uh, I have to uh, look into that. Uh, I don't actually know that currently. Okay. Uh, the other question was the user that was created. Yes. Um, so like, is it possible to create that user declaratively? Like, because otherwise once you deploy the proxy SQL, user has to log into the proxy SQL terminal and then uh, create a user uh, for MySQL that they can use to sort of, you know, run MySQL queries against this proxy SQL, correct? Yes. Yeah, so is it possible to create those uh, user also declaratively or no currently? Uh, currently it is not possible. QDB is not supporting this feature, but yes, it is. Uh, it can be integrated with our QDB. Uh, and yeah, we are uh, looking forward to actually integrate this uh, section with this so that uh, I might not uh, enter the users manually, log into the admin panel and so on. Okay, and, and does that user needs to also match the user that exists in MySQL itself? Or is it like, uh, basically you have to create the user both on the MySQL side and also on the proxy SQL side? Yes, yes, you have to create it first on the MySQL side and then uh, put an entry for that user in the proxy SQL side. With the same username and password? Yes. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, I think uh, we, we need to work on that fairly quickly because, uh, because, uh, because you know, we expect the users to be able to do everything declaratively like just with YAMLs and uh, not have to like okay, you know, after the provisioning go and manually run some additional stuff. Yes. So let's be at it. Okay. Uh, Actually we are planning like uh, you can provide a secret in that secret you you may mention uh, a lot of users because uh, MySQL servers may contain a lot of users. So in the single YAML using which I am deploying proxy SQL it would be a bit uh, chaotic so yeah we have to look into that okay yes i, I think uh, yes there it has to be somewhere somewhere declarative yes uh, however it is um so okay uh, i think that's that's all questions i had okay thanks thank you So with this, we are concluding the webinar. Thank you all for your lively participation today. We hope to see you again. Have a nice day.